This is the Global Broadcasting Service, serving remote outposts since 1928. Hi, everyone. Welcome aboard the Walt Disney World Express Monorail. Caramba, we have something really big for you today. Welcome, foolish mortals. Now then, hang on to them hats and glasses, because this here's the wildest ride in the wilderness. This is the DBC Pod with Phil Schoen and Jason Dodge. Hey everybody, welcome to this week's pod. This is the week in review of August 21st, 2021. Actually being recorded on August 21st, 2021. This is a, this is a first, <laughs> Phil. I th- Is it a first, Phil? I mean, I think we have to have recorded on a Saturday. I think, yeah, point. earlier on, I feel like we were adjusting our days a little more. Then we got really good about doing Sundays, but... I think we yes. found a Saturday earlier on. So, I mean, this this show is just, it's the genie, right? Like, I mean, <laughs> I, we have, you, you scripted me a preamble, um, as you often do. And like, I... I I think I thought I, I I didn't I made fun of you last week, but I wasn't doing it mean spiritedly. I was just kind of as <laughs> a joke because I mean, what well, in any case? But yeah, this is the genie show. I don't think anybody else is talking about anything else. No, I was, th- I, I was thinking about all? there is some some news that came up, but nobody really <laughs> is really nobody talking cares. about that too much. So we can uh, maybe cover that next week as well. We'll do two weeks of uh, news next week. Yeah, not so not news next week. <laughs> uh, just before before we get into anything else, we have the DBC expedition on transportation. This week, uh, Phil always comes up with the brilliant ideas, and this one is no exception. Uh, this week, we're going to talk about the monorail, and I think we're going to finish up the monorail next week. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm going on vacation next week. Phil's going on vacation the week after, but we have a spot to record next weekend, so you will not miss us at <laughs> all. So do not be worried. Um, but anyway, yes, let's. The, before we get into the GD, Phil, I think we do. We got. We have to share as as we do on a weekly basis. The DCI, uh, the Disney Comeback Index. It popped up about, if I could do my math correctly, three tenths of a percent to sixty nine point one seven, as you see on your screen. Uh, some of the updates: Stroll Talk with Crutch, mm-hmm. Boma reopens, Victoria Falls Lounge or Tatuga Tavern reopens as well. Um, some minor stuff, which is a minor uptick, and Disney's kind of just plowing ahead with a lot of their stuff. So, um, Delta be damned, I guess. I don't know. Um, we will have an update from Phil's one and only lovely wife, who's going to be up there this week, uh, potentially, right? She's, she has tickets. We're going to go. She's going to, his family's going to feel it out, so to speak. All right. See if it's safe or they feel comfortable. And, um, because I, I think. You know what a lot of people are seeing. We're seeing on Twitter. We're seeing on Discord that there's boarding groups for Rise, like open at five o'clock at night. Yeah. Standby queues. It's a ghost town down there. Not exactly July 2020 ghost town, yeah. whatever. But um, yeah, but some of the parts a lot of stuff. Empty. Yep. And a kind of, kind of on a personal note, because I'm seeing this on Twitter. I'm seeing this in our own Discord um, server. There's there's a bit of Disney depression going on right mm-hmm. now. Quite a bit. I mean, as I I, I, I announced it's not really announced. I'm, that, I'm not that <laughs> egotistical, but I mentioned that I we canceled our trip for October and we're, we postponed it to February of next year. So I found myself going through not depression. I, I don't want to say that because that might that might imply a lot of things. But a malaise. I like the word malaise, yeah. Phil. Um, you know, Disney news is not as exciting. I didn't engage in much as the Disney conversation as much or the genie conversation as much on Discord than I would have. I mean, I was busy that day. I was, I was out of out of my <laughs> house for most of the day. I was driving. Uh, but, you know, you kind of just kind of take all that Disney stuff and kind of put it in the background. Unless yep. you have – there's a lot of people are contemplating canceling their upcoming trips for November and December. There's a lot of people that have already canceled the trips for September and and October. Uh, I know you are kind of on the edge. Friend of the show, Matt Pedo, is thinking about canceling some different yeah. sh- uh, trips and stuff like that. You know, he's waffling back and forth. And we're not here to tell you whether you should cancel the trips. That's for your own you know, determination. I personally have three unvaccinated small children. And that's, that was my main main thought process. But but the, the reason why I'm bringing this all up, if you are having any kind of depression or you're feeling kind of sad about your typical Disney excitement where you're chatting on Twitter or on Discord with us or anywhere else, um, write in and maybe we can kind of brighten your day a little bit, kind of spread around <laughs> some you know pixie dust, make everybody kind of happy, remember some of the better days. 
Um, this is my second Disney trip that I've canceled in a row. So I feel everybody out there. And I want to make sure, like, reach out to us on Twitter at jdodge80 or at, you know, uh, poddbc or anywhere else where you can find us on Discord. Kind of jump in, drop, you know, talk in general chat. Come hit us up with a DM somewhere. And we'll hopefully we can make everybody feel better about Disney because there's a lot of exciting things to come and you shouldn't feel sad or depressed or let that ruin your day. And I yep. know a lot of people out there are feeling that. So I just want to tell you, just in case you are not alone, we feel you. And we're happy that you're listening to the show, and maybe hopefully we can bring a smile to your face. However, maybe not <laughs> we'll that. See. We'll see about that with the uh, news. No, topic, no. But, uh, well, no, Phil. That smile costs you fifteen dollars a day. <laughs> I mean, we don't have a Patreon, but um, maybe maybe we should charge fifteen dollars so a month. I don't know. Um, so the the news, Phil. The news of the day is the genie. I'm going to flash this on the screen here. So, yep. wh- what happened this week? What happened? <laughs> So we were getting words uh, earlier in the week that something big was coming and that we thought it was going to be the news about the replacement of Fast Passes coming. And that was true. And news broke and the story was released this past Wednesday, August 18th, that Disney is announcing a new service called the Genie Service, which they say will reimagine the guest experience at Walt Disney Feels World. Feels complicated, and- Phil and Disneyland Resort. So right off the bat, it's interesting that they're going to be using the same system at Disneyland and Walt Disney World. That makes sense. Yeah. So what is that system? What is Disney Genie? Because there was a whole lot of parts to it. And <laughs> I, 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 honestly, I came on the show hoping like you could teach me what, what this all is. I have speculation, yeah. but I don't know if it's true. We're going to find so, out. Yeah. So the, the, The first thing to keep in mind is Disney Genie itself is not about the Fast Pass and the paid things and stuff like that. The Genie itself is a complimentary, what they're saying, in-app service. It's going to be part of my Disney experience, not a separate app or anything like that. And it's going to help guide you through the park. It's going to help put together your itinerary based on what you say you like to do. You can say, you know, I want princesses, I want villains, whatever. And it'll kind of help customize your itinerary through the day. It'll help find your favorites at a, at a glance so you can see the things that you're looking forward to uh, most most interested in. It'll, it'll pop those up. And it also sort of highlight for those things that you think you're most interested in. Like, hey, here's the wait time for this ride that you said you were interested in. It's, it, it came down a little bit. Maybe now's a good time to go ride it. That sort of thing. So the whole idea is to try to move people through the parks more efficiently so that they're not wasting time and not sure where to go and that sort of thing and just really focus on the types of things they want to do. It's also going to pop up in there about not just attractions, but also things like shows and dining. So if you have an ADR coming up, it'll mention that. If there's a you know a, a quick service you mentioned and say, hey, the, the wait's short there. It's, it's near this ride you want to go to, that sort of thing. So it's going to be more things all in one place, which I think will be easier for people. If it works the way they're saying it, I think it will actually be a nice guide and kind of an all-in-one snapshot for people when they're in the parks. Well, let, let's stop right there before we get to some of the, the paid things. So this, yeah. what, what you described already is free. Everybody mm-hmm. gets access to it. So, you know, you could go on the Disney Parks blog and you can watch their video. It has a, a man that hosts the whole process and he tells you all about it. And then they get some of the, um, what do they call them now? They, they used to be the Disney moms. They're the planning something or the other, the, the planning people. Okay. Know, their official Disney pa- oh, planning yeah, panel. The- yeah, I think so. It was the mom's panel, and they, they changed it. Yeah. Right, because it's now it's inclusive to all men and women. And anyway, it had like six people on, and it was very cheery, very Disney-like. They were asking all the right questions that you know for promotion, as as we would expect. Um, so this is what – now, Phil, correct me if I'm wrong or jump in with any of these things. So the Disney Genie is going to be sitting on your app – and you don't have to use it at all, and you can just go about your day d- minus fast passes and do whatever you were going to do. Exactly. Do your mobile ordering, go wait on lines all over the place. So because fast passes are no longer a thing, right? So this is this is how your experience, uh, when the rubber hits the road, the real world, the reality, not how they planned it, not how they test it, not how some naive engineer out in Burbank thinks know how you know Walt Disney World worked when he's never been to Florida before. From from two men who have planned trips aplenty <laughs> over the over the years, um, if you choose not to use any of this, the only thing that you're losing is the three fast passes, right? Correct. So so here here is how your day is going to go. It's actually going to be better for mm-hmm. you 
as a uh, guest if you've never done any extensive planning before, because here's why. Um, if you are the type of person that maybe look what kind of fast passes the week before, the day of, et cetera, et cetera, or you kind of just book some random fast passes, or even if you were even a moderate planner and said, oh, I'm going to fast pass Mine Train and like two others, because some of the other parks you could only do the, the tier one fast passes anyway, yeah. right? So regardless of that, you show up the day of and you don't use anything, the standby lines are going to be actually quicker now for you. Because sure. if you want to work it out, so I, I read this, uh, Andy, on Discord and others all over the place. Um, you know, Adam, a.k.a. Castestone, has also done all the math of this before. So approximately, um, this is 2019, you are waiting online for Flight of Passage, Mine Train, any of the e-ticket attractions. For every eight fast pass guests, there's roughly two standby guests that get pass dropped. So if you've ever been to fast pass line, you know there's a point where they both merge get onto the queue to get onto the ride vehicle, right, Phil? Mm -hmm. And if you've ever been on the standby line, you're standing there, and then the cast member goes, okay, come back this way, come by, and you're like looking. There's like eight people, ten people, nine people walking past you. You're like, what about me? And then she's like, okay, pleb, it's your turn to ride the attraction, and you can go. And then like two people go by, or your party goes by. He says, all right, stop. Now all the fancy people in the fast pass line over <laughs> here need to come by. So that's why the standby line gets so fast because um, four times as many fast pass people go by you uh, when you're waiting the standby line. So right now, we're going to get to because fast passes are gone, less people are in that fast pass lane. So therefore, more standby people get through. Right? So the standby line might be longer. Some of these attractions have a threshold. It's so like, like you know, you show yeah. up, it's an hour long, you're not getting on that, you're going to go to the other, you know, you know, D or C ticket attraction. So like, okay, mine train is a two hour wait. Okay, you're not going to get online. Most likely you're going to go over to teacups or haunted mansion or small world or do something else, right? Go, go have lunch or something like that. So um, the, the standby lines are probably going to have the same amount of people in them, but they're just going to chug through quicker. So you as a person who doesn't do any of the paid stuff, you're going to be waiting online shorter. So that's a good thing for you, I think. Um, the and only I thing is that... Genie stuff. If you do use some of the genie stuff, if it works properly, it should also point out things that like, hey, I'm at Mind Train. It says it's two hours now. It'll tell you, hey, based on crowd levels, it it's probably not going to get any shorter yes. than that. So you might as well get on it. Or it might say, actually, one, you know, later in the day, it, uh, the trend is that it should come down. So why don't you go do something else and then come back and do Mind Train? So it really, you know, we'll see how good a job it does at that. But it should <laughs> help guide you through and kind of know when's the best time to get on some of these lines. So, yes, yeah, so now we've graduated from I'm not using my darn phone at all um, to I'm going to use my phone. And I'm just going to use whatever's free. Yep. So um, on, on the, the second slide that I have here, this is all from the Disney Parks uh, video blog. It's the tip board, right? So, um, you know, they have, you know, you, you, you'll list attractions you know, give you what the standby line is, and then they'll give you options on you can purchase this lightning lane. So, Phil, why don't you describe what a lightning yeah. lane is? So, as as Jason mentioned, there are no more fast passes, and therefore there is no more fast pass queue. Instead, there is the lightning lane, which the genie, the base complimentary service, does not include access to these lightning lanes. So, what is the lightning lanes? In short, it's the new name for the fast pass queues. Yes. That's the lightning lane. It is the a secondary line queue at each attraction that has it where you will be able to go quicker onto the ride, just like with fast pass. However, the way that they're accessed or you get access to the fast to the lightning lanes is different than than how fast pass worked. Now, how will you do it? There are two ways depending on the ride. For the bulk of the attractions in the park, you will gain access to their lightning lanes by adding what Disney's calling Genie Plus. That comes at a price of $15 per person per day at Walt Disney World, $20 at Disneyland, because at Disneyland you get photo pass included. You don't get photo pass included at Walt Disney World. Which is a, it's a damn shame, Phil. I'm going to say damn shame because <laughs> they should have added this, but yeah. whatever. Go um, and just to give you an idea, at Walt Disney World, this will cover uh, 40 plus attractions and 15 plus at Disneyland. Then you will use the app. Uh, basically, the Genie app will then have the Lightning Lane ability built into it once you unlock it by spending $15 a day. And it'll say, hey, the line for this uh, is two hours. But if you want to come back in two hours, 
then you can use the lightning lane and kind of get right on the, on the, the ride. One thing that's different with fast passes though, is like when you pre-selected your fast passes, you could kind of pick what time you wanted to go to the ride. With this service, they will just highlight for each ride when the next available time is. So it's actually kind of more like old paper fast passes where you went to the machine and you were kind of just given a return time. You didn't get to, to select what your return time was going to be. So, but for people that were used to that, or have used uh, Max Pass out at Disneyland, this is going to feel very similar to that, except you know it's phone based versus having to run around and grab grab the paper. So this will get you access to those Lightning Lanes, and as Jason was saying, because you have to buy it versus everybody in the park getting it, there should be less people using it, and therefore I think two things: one, those lines should be shorter. You know, sometimes with Fast Pass, you get in the Fast Pass line, it'd still be twenty minutes, thirty minutes. I, I think that won't happen anymore unless the ride breaks down or something. And also, since less people are using it, the standby line should move a little bit faster. So let let me jump in there, Phil, um, so we can start clarifying because yep. you threw a lot of information out there, and there is a lot of information. It's very confusing. So Lightning Lane is essentially the fast pass lane. So how do you gain access to that fast pass or Lightning Lane, as we'll have to learn how to call it? Yep. So previously, fast passes. If you were on site guests, you could book them sixty days in advance. If you were off site, you had to book them thirty days in advance. Lightning Lane, you have to book the day of. So Disney's really pushing some delicious breakfasts because everybody's going to have to wake up before 7 o'clock to start booking their lightning lanes. So if you are paying for uh, Genie Plus, not Genie, Genie Plus, there's, there's, there's the second tier to that, um, you're, you're paying that 15 bucks, And I, I'm pretty sure, Phil, right now, as far as I know, you could pick, like if you're going eight park days in a row, you could pick which days you want yep. the Genie Plus activated. Um, and as of right now, we don't know if there's there's no announcement of discounts. Like, you know, tickets no, are so, cheaper as you go $8. It's like a flat fee, $15 yeah, So basically what they're saying is that you can either pre-book for the entire ticket length you have. So if you have a five-day ticket, you could say ahead of time, I want Genie Plus every day. And you kind of pre-select so you're set up for it for every day. If you only want to do it certain days, you have to wait until that day to buy Genie Plus for the day that you want. You can't say ahead of time, I want Genie Plus on days two, three, and five. You have to wait till the day, and it becomes active at midnight that day. So basically, and, and Jason mentioned 7 a.m., because that's when you the, the time you can select your first lightning lane for the day. So pretty much everyone's going to have to get online at 6.30 or whatever to buy their Genie Plus for the day and be oh ready to, to select their first lightning lane for the day. I, my my camera is freaking out, so I'm going to switch to, <laughs> for some reason, my whole thing got screwed up. All right, so Lightning Lane comes from Genie Plus, but that's not the only place where you can get Lightning Correct. Lane from. You that is the actually. Yeah, ahead. I was going to say that's the bulk of the attractions. However, Disney has indicated there are a few what they're calling in demand attractions that won't be bundled together in Dis in genie plus <laughs> they are called individual attraction selections because i guess nobody could think of a good name um and where for those you can schedule a time to arrive at and use their lightning lane however yep. you have to pay per ride so and that that price will vary by attraction and by crowd level so from what we're hearing on the rumor side, this will vary between $4 and $24, depending on the ride and crowd, crowd level and stuff like that. The example rides they provided were Seven Dwarfs Mine Train in Magic Kingdom and Radiator Springs Racers out in Disney California Adventure. Also of note, you can only do up to two attractions a day and you can't do the same attraction twice. So I, I would imagine the pricing is going to be similar to what we saw in Paris mm -hmm. with, with what they're doing, anywhere $10 to $20 per person per ride. I like how it's only limited to so you can't get those power users that, power users that just kind of um, go in there. So he, here, here's the, so basically now you have a system where you pay $15 a day. You're going to get infinite access to Lightning Lane um, for all the most, most attractions except for the ones that always have like the two-hour – uh, wait attached to them or one hour wait attached to them. So if you're now a Disney power user, right, you're used to booking your three fast passes at 10 o'clock, 11 o'clock, and 12 o'clock. So you can do the rope drop two or, tra two or three attractions, get your fast passes out of the way, and start refreshing when you get back for after lunch, right? Yep. 
And if mm-hmm. for those out there that don't know, refreshing meant basically you could book your fourth fast pass, and once that was used, you could book your fifth and the sixth and seventh, etc. So the tip, typically, what you would do is once all your fast passes were done for the day, you would just start trolling your your MDE um, for the next ride. And for us with little kids, we didn't care. We had a party of five, so we weren't able to refresh uh, Mind Train. But if you're a party of one or two, you could actually get like an e-ticket attraction Sometimes, if you were lucky. Yep. Um, there were certain times in the day where they dropped additional fast passes where if you like, I think it was like, like one twenty in the afternoon. If you started refreshing exactly when it hit one twenty, you could pick up some extra attraction. So there was some gaming to the system. Uh, but for the most part, if you were just casually using the system, you can, as soon as you get, you got, you get a fast pass for mermaid at magic kingdom. As soon as you dinged in with your fast pass, you're waiting in line. You can start looking for what your next attraction was. And usually, you can once you were done, you walk right over to that one because it is usually like teacups, and then you went over to like Astro Orbiter, and then you went to Carousel of Progress, and then you went over to something else. So these weren't by any means like you know the best rides in the park, but you could get pirates sometimes in Haunted Mansion oh, yeah. and stuff like yeah. that. But you never wait. I went fast pass to fast pass lane. Mm-hmm. And I'm that's the one aspect I'm going to miss. However, I think Lightning Lane is going to be doing that for you with Genie Plus. Because one thing that we haven't talked about is, and I'm going to put it up here on the screen, is um, picking your attractions. So you basically Genie Plus is going to basically act like, and I said basically like 500 times already. <laughs> I, I realized. Um, you're going to have to create your own profile. Just like Google Ads um, select, um, you know, trolls your web browsing history and tracks you like, oh, this guy likes sports. This guy likes this on Amazon or whatever and puts pops up ads for you that you want. You need to build that profile uh, purposefully inside the genie. So um, on the screen, you're going to have to go, this keeps resetting every time I switch back to the screen. I have to learn how to use this. So... You have to do select your interests, right? So you're seeing this on the screen. So like I like um, certain live entertainment or certain a- interactive type of stuff. Or like like Phil said before, princesses or Fab Five or Marvel stuff when you're over in Disneyland, like that type of thing. Um, and it's going to say, okay, this person loves all of this stuff. So what they're going to do is um, start suggesting different things you can do. So – one of the downfalls of this system, Phil, is I think you're going to have to be staring at your phone a lot more. Yeah. That's definitely uh, one comment I've seen from a lot of even a lot of people that aren't that upset about the price because they kind of knew something was coming paid is that they're like, does this mean everybody's just going to be walking around the parks with their face in their phone the entire time looking at what Genie's telling them they're supposed to do next? Um, and I think, you know, there's obviously already a, a bit of that going on in the parks mm-hmm. already with my Disney experience and they had the Disney play app or the parks play app and stuff like that. So there's a lot of phone usage going on anyway. But I think for people that don't want to use have to use their phone some of them are feeling like great now i have to use my phone when i don't really want to on vacation now i i love touring plans when tess is the man right when it comes to all this stuff i love love all the metrics i hate using a touring plan when i'm actually in the park i tried it once it's if i was there just by myself it'd be amazing or if i was just there with a significant other or a friend or something like that it'd be great because we were like our objective now is to do as many rides as possible. Yeah. So if your objective is just like to pound through the park, have do it fun that way, and that's what you find, touring planes are great. When I'm there with a bunch of kids and we need to kind of you know stop and smell the roses, that type of thing, not everybody wants to charge through the park going from ride to ride to ride to ride to ride, whatever. Um, and that's where I think the Genie Plus is going to is going to fall down. Uh, is because people are going to be constantly stuck in the phone looking, okay, what's my next one? There's going to be notifications going up. Your battery is going to get sucked down. There's going to be a lot of issues with that part. So going back to the original sentiment, so you have to start putting in the stuff that you like, and the genie is going to start suggesting different things. And then you're going to say, why would I want this? So there, there's a slide here I'm showing on the screen. Why this? Um, why would you want Tomorrowland? Oh, you love transit things you were on the railroad earlier today assuming that it's open eventually but why don't you try the people mover because you like things that move so i i'm think assuming like like you know when you read a blog there's tags at the end of the blog yeah, each yeah. ride has a tag so it's going to start grouping rides together based on different things um you can see that you know genie uh, the genie plus is going to start you know sh- recommending attractions to you like which i think is going to be the great thing like oh by the way this attraction is you know, uh, it's only a 40-minute wait, so why don't you go over here? So this is what Disney wants to do. 
is basically be able to herd people around their parks even better. Because we already know the artificially inflate wait times, right, Phil? Like, mm-hmm. you know, okay, Fantasyland is overly crowded. Let's add 30 minutes to every single wait time. So everybody's like, oh, I'm not going to go here. Let's go to back to Tomorrowland type of thing. Yep. So this is going to be even like, we're going to herd you around the park and tell you where all the good stuff is. I will mean that good stuff, but the, the low weights, right? Yeah. And try to influence people to get out of, out of lines and stuff like that. So um, how does how do you think... Would you take advantage of that? Phil? Will you be constantly paying attention to your phone if it's going to start directing you to a low weight? I think, yeah. I mean, I think this all comes down to how well it's executed and mm-hmm. what I think it does well, and maybe what I think it doesn't do well, and that I'll kind of you know do on my own. Right. Um, you know. You know. I think uh, you mentioned Lentesta. He was kind of talking about well, this is this is going to tell you what Disney thinks you should do, but what Len does is try to tell you how to kind of game the system to do things. Ar- that go against the like kind of what Disney's pushing you to do. It's almost like he's playing Moneyball, you know, in, in baseball or something. Yeah. Like well, I mean, if only if it makes sense, right? Yeah. Because like I'm sure oh, yeah, you yeah. maximize your time. It's going to suggest why don't you go here for lunch? Because yeah. hey, you haven't spent enough money yet. <laughs> you need to come eat lunch right here. Yeah. Um, I do. I but, do have to laugh that it's just showing you cosmic rays. It's not showing yeah. you like Cinderella's royal table. <laughs> like go have lunch at for eighty dollars a person versus fifteen or whatever it is. Yeah. Uh, but I think I'll, I'm intrigued to see how it works and how it suggests things. And I like do. I yep. say, if it starts getting like, you know, the the one thing I, I was comparing it to is if you use like SeatGeek to buy tickets and you kind of like, okay, I'm interested in a ticket for this game. And it kind of color codes for which ones they think are a good price for the ticket. Mm-hmm. And I'm kind of thinking, well, if this app sort of does that and say, okay, I'm interested in these kind of rides. Oh, this one is green. So I should go do this one now. Whereas something else, it might say like, oh, actually, this this will probably get better later. The wait time will go down later. So if it does it well, I think I'm going to kind of keep it in mind. I'm not going to follow it necessarily letter of the law. If I really you know want to do something else, I'll do it. But um, I think I'm going to use it as just another, at least as another tool, like in my, in how, how I execute my day. Well, I mean, like part of, part of me, like, you know, how, how do we gain this system, right? So you're going to have all these people that go down. This is their one-in-a-lifetime trip. This is their one-in-five-year trip, right? So, um, you know, it's all new. But when when times are right, we're usually going down once a year at the very least. Right. So we want to – and we're scouring everybody else that lives down there that goes five times a year, right? They're getting a lot of practice out of this thing. I suspect that if you have a Genie Plus subscription or whatever, whatever you want to call it yeah. for the day um, – they're going to show you all these rides to get on the lightning lane, right? So that that's that's why the GD Plus is, I think, worth the money. And you brought up on, in a tweet earlier today whether, like, you know, how does this change your planning? Do you go and say, instead of doing five park days, I'm doing four park days, and the money that I'm saving for that fifth park day, I'm going to spend on lightning lane and GD Plus? I would say no, right? I say basically you only drop the 15 extra bucks or so party of you know party of five for both of us it's an extra 80 dollars a day um i'm not wasting another part i'm not just going to go not do a park day because of 80 dollars um and i'm going to use it like are you thinking that potentially that you would not do an extra park day because of this it, potentially I, I think it would come down to i, I kind of see it also crowd levels will play a role, right? Like I think if you're able to go at a lower crowd level time and have a longer trip, and I'm not saying like one day more, but doing like seven or eight days, like then maybe you don't need it or you don't need it every day at least. And you can kind of get pretty much everything that you want done across those seven or eight days. Are you sacrificing? Are you sacrificing a park day just not to do anything then at that point? Because like, like, you know, yeah. like when you go from like six park days, we've talked about this before, yeah. obviously. When you go to six to eight park days, it's like an extra $300 for everybody to get two right, more right. park days, right? So the cost is very minimal. Yeah. The high impact cost, I think what Disney wants to do is like, well, if you're going to go, you might as well spend another $80 a per, uh, for the family to go into the park today. So they're earning money for that, that aspect of it. Yeah. And I was also sort of grouping in also if you were going to take – partake in the light the paid lightning lane the individual right. yep. attraction selections to a day is which that, is good which let, let's say they average at at 15 dollars. that's another 30 dollars per person per day on top of i guess 75 or 80 sure. so now you're over a hundred dollars a person a day on top of all your tickets so I, oh, wait, I wait, wait, let's it, stop let's stop something yeah. came into my mind it popped in my mind okay. i'm gonna quiz uh, you all right. all right um what what is the, the what is speed um speed reference um pop okay. quiz hot shot okay here we go Name the one attraction from each park 
that you would spend fifteen dollars to go on? I'm gonna start with Magic Kingdom. Go. Magic Kingdom, unless probably none. Unless I would we, agree. I would say if we hadn't been there in a, in a in a few in a while, my kids do like Mine Train, and if it was like two hours or something like that, I would consider. Would it you spend eighty dollars for Mine Train? I maybe. Mm. Mm. It's not. It, it's not mm. a definite no. Not a definite yet. It would depend okay. on the, the situation. But. There's nothing at Magic Kingdom I would spend eighty bucks to go on with my family. Yeah. Okay. Epcot. Uh, now we're gonna we're gonna assume Guardians is open and Ratatouille is open. Okay, I would pay for Guardians. Okay. Um, I don't blame you for that one. Uh, Hollywood Studios, I would pay eighty dollars for Rise of the Resistance. Absolutely. Same thing. Only Same because thing. I do not want to get the headache and then want to start getting extremely angry yeah. at cast members that I, that are not it's not their <laughs> fault that my trip is ruined um animal kingdom that obviously the answer is no there's nothing in there that's worth five dollars per person let alone oh well 15. i would i would say flight of passage is worth five no no okay. you know, well, flight of passage is not worth it you wait on the line because that's all you're doing at that park anyway so what else are you going to be doing at that park all right i guess it depends on the line but right it, look, it, look it would get to a point where i've spent some but not a lot for flight of passage Oh, I mean, granted, if yeah, – well, yeah, I'm being facetious. If it was $5, I could spend 25 bucks to get right on a flight of passage for my family. Yes, right. I would do that. Um, but, but I would probably I mean, not pay 24 a person for a flight of no, passage. No, I would go I would go to Africa. I'd get some quick lunch, a couple <laughs> beers, get online, look for a bathroom halfway through the line, <laughs> get back on the line, get onto the ride, and then do like trust crafts for dinner. And that's my day at Animal Kingdom. I'm very happy. <laughs> I'm very happy, I think. Um, okay, so – Here's the thing, though, that only worries me. So I was advocating on Discord that Lightning Lane via Genie Plus, right? I'm not talking yeah. about buying it outright. Yeah. Um, it's going to be interesting because I, I, to me, it sounds like it's it's like refreshing. They're going to be ref refreshing for you, and it's going to be automated. The only hiccup to this is that Lightning Lanes are limited. The whole idea between behind Lightning Lane is a charge. Mm -hmm. So it must be quick and it must be limited versus fast passes. Everybody got them. Cast members is handing them out like candy type of thing. So what do you think the hourly cadence is going to be looking like? It's like, it's like you're going to get out and you're going to book your genie plus lightning lanes at seven o'clock and you're going to find one at like 11 for like jungle cruise. And that's it. Yeah. Is that what's well, going to look like? That's going to be the big thing that, that we don't know yet until it's actually up and running is how, you know, how often, how much, how many people are they willing to push through that lane and how often can you get one? Cause you don't get three, you just get one and you can't book your next one until you've checked in for the one you have booked. Um, there are some rumors that perhaps there'll be a time limit after two hours or whatever, but we'll, what Disney's saying is that it's only after you've checked in for your ride. So if you got in and the, the things you really want to do aren't available until two or three o'clock in the afternoon, are you going to use the lightning lane for that? Or are you going to try to do something else in the morning? I think that's where the whole kind of strategy comes in. But to your point, if I'm paying 15 bucks a day and I log in and I can't really get anything I want until for five hours or something like that, that's I want a refund. Gonna, yeah. I'm not going to feel so good about that. I want, I want to be able to have, I want to be able to do a lightning. If I pay for Ginny plus, I want to be able to do a lightning lane at least one per hour. I don't care if it's for teacups or something, you know, a ticket track. I'm not, I'm not going to expect signing up for Lightning Lane Genie Plus and be like, I'm going to get Mind Train, I'm going to get Space oh, Mountain, yeah, yeah. and I'm going to get Splash, right? But like, I better I'm be, not, not well, expecting first, I better that. be able to get some of those. Well, at least right? one of them, maybe later in the day. I don't care yeah, yeah. when it is, right? And, and it's fine. I'll rope drop because I'm staying on property. Yep. I get in early, right? So I'm going to get one of those guaranteed with, a, with, li with not much of a wait. Right. And then I, well, as soon as I'm done with that, I want to be able to get a lightning lane for something within the next hour. Whether I mean, it doesn't have to be the best ride in the park, but I want I want to be able to get through. I want to be able to like wait in line for like Haunted Mansion. Like you go through your rope drop procedure, you get mm -hmm. all two of the rides you want. Let's say you do Splash, you do Haunted Mansion, and then I'm like, I want to be able to get a lightning lane for like nine o'clock or ten o'clock hour for Pirates and get on there. And once that's yeah. registered, I want to be scheduled Pirate. I want to if I'm on Pirates at ten. I want to be able to get a lightning lane pass through Genie Plus for like Small World at the eleven o'clock hour. Mm -hmm. I, I I I immediately want to be able to book the next hour and get on a ride yep. because if I can't do that, I'm not paying for it. Because what what's yep. the what's the point at that yep. you know at, at the so I don't know how readily they're going to be available because I know they're limited. They're not just going to let everybody go on them. Yep. So that's going to be a huge question. How does it work operationally? 
And, um, you know, a lot of people like blow a lot of uh, smoke up your skirts up there. You know, like, oh, this is going to be great. It's gonna, and all this other stuff. No, it's all BS. It's, it, it, it's how it actually works in the real world. Do you have yeah. how long do you have to wait and all this other stuff? And um, like another thing, I, I flashed this up on the screen before. It's like Disney Genie is flexible. Right. And it talks about let's do a switcheroo. We're looking at this right now. It says the genie has uncovered and other nearby experiences to enjoy during this time. And I don't know if it was like your touring plan had like this, 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 and this, and all of a sudden this popped up and you can go do it. Because it's saying, oh, Star Tours is available at 1130 at a lower weight. Like what is that? You're swapping recommendations. Yeah. Phil, on this screen, is this basically like you input what you want to do for the day and it's giving you an itinerary and all of a sudden like there's something new in your itinerary that it wants you to do and it's all of a sudden like let's switch this around at this point? Yeah. Like a GPS, like we found a route that's four minutes faster. Hit yeah. this and you go around the trap. Is that basically what this is, I think? That's what it seems like or – I don't know if somebody cancels like a lightning lane. Will it be like, oh, hey, something new's available? We I don't think this is lightning it. lane. I think this is all oh, this standby. Is, yeah. Well, I think I think potentially apply for both. But yeah, standby where it's like, oh yeah, the the, the line dropped quickly here. So and that's something that you've expressed interest in before. I don't know how specific it's going to be with you inputting the things you want to do, or if it's just like we talked about before, based on trends. Like, hey, you were looking at this before. And by the way, now the, the wait times just went down. Maybe maybe go do that next instead of what you were going to go do or something like that. I just flashed to the screen the ask a question. This the Disney Siri or <laughs> Disney Android, whatever they call it. I don't I don't even know what the Android version is. I don't use any of them other than the Alexa on my my kitchen. This is the Alexa of Disney. Ask a question, and in the in the thing that I'm going to flash back on the screen. How late does the monorail run? And I don't even know how late the monorail <laughs> runs. So maybe this is helpful. Is this something that you would use, Phil? Is this useful to you? I might. I mean, I don't like the talking to. Like, I just type in my question into Google or whatever. Google it. Yes, exactly. Yeah, my, my wife has, because uh, she we have we both have Androids, and it's just Google. It just says, ask Google. And she uses it. She's like, Google, mm -hmm. set an alarm for this, blah, blah, blah. And it sometimes works, sometimes doesn't. But I just, <laughs> I just like typing Hopefully, if it's an alarm, it works often, <laughs> more often than not. Um, but I just like, I, I would just type things in. But but if again, if it works, it, I'm sure some people would be like, look, I you know what what time is this? I like you said, I don't know. I don't know what what they would ask, but probably yeah. <laughs> ask all the questions that cast members hate answering. I, I guess. Um, I just flashed to the screen forecasted wait times. I like this portion of the app. Mm -hmm. Like uh, I love data. So if I know that I really want to go to Pirates and it's eleven thirty in the after or morning, and I'm like, okay, I know this is the peak time on a Tuesday in August. This is yeah. basically touring plans. What you're paying for, right? They have yeah. all this data, and it's wonderful. Now, the only thing is you can trust Touring Plans data because it's real data. I will never trust Disney's data. Maybe it is true. Like the wait time, like on their thing, it's 55 minutes and it's 40 yeah. minutes and 30 minutes. Like I don't trust their wait times on the rides because they're probably accurate maybe 70 to 80% of the time, I want to mm -hmm. say. But there's sometimes they're using that to manipulate people. So uh, that's a hard time. Like would you would you rather use the Touring Plans Forecasted wait times or Disney's? I'd probably rather use touring plans, but yes. at the same time, the Disney one is right. It's, it's right with everything else. And, and I think it is another data point to use. So if I'm only going to use one, it would be touring plans. But, you know, having that right in the middle of everything when I'm checking my ADRs and stuff like that, and it says, hey, by the way, this, this is going to go down, you know, next hour is, is probably a low time. I, I'd probably listen to it. I don't know. I mean, I mean, it, it's it's not going to steer you wrong. It's not like Disney's yeah. like it's going to be like a five hour wait when they're showing the low wait time. <laughs> exactly, right? it, it's, yeah. it's 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 moderately just, accurate. But I think it is keeping in mind that it's showing you that something that's probably true, but it's the thing that Disney wants to show you. Yeah, it's not which is not a big deal though. Yeah, I mean, yeah, exactly. Disney wants to steer you in the right direction because yeah. they ultimately want good guest experiences. Yeah, they want right? you to so have lower weights because that's, I mean, what's the biggest complaint other than price? What's the biggest complaint that everyone's had about Disney Parks for the crowded. past 10 years? Parks are too crowded. So if this can make it feel less crowded, guests will be happy about that's it. That's good. Even the free version, right? Um, just before we get too far, I did want to mention one other element related to the individual attraction selections. Most of these will have a standby queue. So like Mine Train, like we said, it's a two hour standby line or you can buy to bypass the standby line select rides will be using a boarding group or virtual queue process so most people are probably familiar with for rise of the resistance part of this did announce that remy's ratatouille adventure will be using a virtual queue it's good i like the rise of resistance 
And so what this means, though, is that basically if you don't get a boarding group, the only way to get on the ride is to buy a individual Pay attraction. Pay that selection. money. Yeah. Pay it. Which some people have actually said, look, if that means I don't have to wake up in the morning and I can just pay 20 bucks to get on Rise of the mm. Resistance, I'll just do that. So That's you know, it'll be interesting to see. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see what people uh, are willing to pay for or whatnot. So, but just something to keep in mind, which obviously also this is the first time now people have been able to pay really to get on Rise of the Resistance before it was just luck with the boarding group. I, I think it's time to mention because it's a good point. Um, one of the things I learned after reading a lot of this stuff is the on-site advantage. Like you can start booking uh, lightning lanes if that's through via Genie Plus or straight out just purchasing them. You can start doing that if you're on-site at 7 o'clock. However, if you're an off-site guest, you can only start doing it at a park open. Well, that's only for the individual attraction selections. Yes. For the, for the Genie Plus, everybody, whether you're on-site or not, can start at 7 a.m. Oh, see, I learned something. This is this is a good thing that we're having this podcast. Well, and to be perfectly honest, that, that I don't that's know. Confusing if you, to me though. That's from Scott Gustin, who contacted G, uh, Disney and has put out that information several times now. So it, it, you know, again, things could change or whatever. But that's what's that's being weird. Reported. That's very weird. I don't so like it. I mean, I don't like it because it's inconsistent. Yes, it it, like, it definitely feels inconsistent. And even as you know, I'm somebody who stays off property, so I like that there's not as much of an advantage to being on property. But I Give think everybody the more. opportunity to buy yeah, at yeah. 7 a.m. Who cares? Yeah. I mean, yeah. like whatever. Like in some ways, it would almost make more sense to be the other way, right? That the genie plus, yeah. you have to be on property at 7 a.m. Otherwise, everybody else only the cheap version. You have to be on. You have to be on property. But if you want to pay all the monies, we don't care where you're coming from. Exactly. I mean, that's, but it's that's, not. That's it's different. the reverse. I mean, I guess I don't. I guess they're doing it. Wait, for no, rides. no, no. If you're off site, you could purchase a lightning lane outright anywhere at any time or starting at seven o'clock in the morning. Right. It's the only genie plus stuff. No. Oh God, I got that reversed. Why does it it's, make sense then? It, what is wrong with Disney? It doesn't make sense. It's the genie plus. Anyone, so if you buy, the, spend the fifteen dollars, you can get your first mm. lightning lane at seven a.m. No matter where you're staying. If you want to buy, say, a rise lightning lane, rise of the resistance. If you're on property, you can do that starting at seven a.m. Mm. If you're off property, you have to wait until you check in. I don't. I don't know think why. that's a good idea I, because if, if you're more probably, uh, I don't know. Um, I don't, I don't know. I, eh, whatever. I don't know. I, that's going to change. I, I guarantee that's going to change at some point. Because yeah. and, and maybe and maybe this is just what what got reported and it's not accurate. Or the, like you said, they're going to change it before it's launched. Yeah. There's a lot of unknowns. Um, I did list out. What's all these unknowns that we don't know? And I think this is stupid. Yeah. <laughs> this is dumb. This is dumb. I'm, I'm like, we're we're now 40-ish minutes into the podcast. We've got the tractionality uh, that we got to do too. <laughs> but I don't want to get off of this topic. And the attraction I really like. So um, I say we skip attractionality for this week. What do you think, Phil? That's fine. Okay. So because we're going to we, – we got in about five minutes. We got to go back to our DBC expedition for this yep. week. And I, Dis, Genie, Genie is very important. Um, the one point I wanted to make – what another point I wanted to make is the other thing – for Walt Disney World is the AR lens. I had my flash of some okay. before. Uh, Disney PhotoPass uh, augmented reality lens. It's basically, it shows, if you watch the video, it shows like minis, like hugging the girl from behind and kind of making some things. This is a cute video. It's probably perfect for like TikTok or. Um, I think they had some of these available. Or whatever Maybe it, it was just a trial through um, Snapchat. And so I think well, that makes sense. No one uses Snapchat anymore, though. <laughs> That's the problem. So it's all TikTok or nothing, basically, yeah. at this point. Uh, probably good for Instagram or something else like the Instagram stories, exactly. that type yeah. of thing. Um, or just kind of saving in your Google Photos. I mean, yeah, it's just a fun little thing. I mean, it's nice it's they fun. have it. but I'm not paying <laughs> money for it, but it's right. just thrown in. Like yeah. It's cheap, whatever. It's easy to do. Um, and they also have this other thing that I, I didn't realize this until I was – combing the YouTube channel for videos is the Genie Plus audio experiences. Phil, what is what is this? Like, I have a family of five. I want an audio experience. Do I put this on speaker? And then we got to like, yeah, you know, that's the what is that's this? definitely the confusing thing. Is that everybody going to have their different experience blasting on speakers and <laughs> confuse everyone else? Or otherwise, now we got to all have headphones on or whatever. I don't know. I mean, is this synced up? Like, like they have like park music and then the audio experience. I, everybody's listening to it at once. That's what the only thing I can think it 
it could be. I mean, what my understanding is that it's park music. It's not like right. somebody talking to you or something like that. So maybe it is just wherever. Are you area. sure? Yeah. Because I, I to me, to me, it's like it's like those things you buy at a museum where like they kind of tell you what's going on and you know what this picture is. I mean, like, maybe it's like the, the example is like Cinderella's castle's mosaics, right? Isn't it telling you the story of the mosaic or like it's playing something? Whatever. Yeah. I mean, maybe you're I right. Maybe it's like the museum thing. They, they didn't really give a lot of information. About there's no it. information. Yeah, there's no information. There's so. no information. It's just yeah. like, here's this. Here's the screenshot. Of, I'm going to show it again. <laughs> Disney Genie Plus Audio Experiences, Cinderella's Castle Mosaics. Like, that's where you walk underneath the castle. You see the, the really detailed, like, mosaics that they've done with all the tile work and the color. It's beautiful. Yeah. And I would love, because it's almost like... To me, I thought I think this is excellent because it's only like your own like personalized or not personalized, but like cheap version of a VIP tour, right? Yep. Like imagine, like the, you're on your phone. They should be able to geotag where you are just by GPS alone, exactly where you are in the park to like five feet. Like you know, you could be standing for in front of the Emporium. Like look up. Here's the this glass is saying has this person's name. They were part of building you know Magic Kingdom like 50 years ago. Like that yeah. would be really cool. I mean, maybe that. it's that or maybe that's part like a, you could turn that on or off like there's different channels like that could be one of them the other know. one i thought i thought it would just be like you go in and it plays cinderella music and maybe hear like chatter from the mice in the background like kind of just to add to the that would be lame only <laughs> wow. because only because only if, like if i was walking around the park with like my earbuds in right by myself yeah. and it knew where i was and play like other like weird sound, not weird, but like cool sounds in my, as I'm walking around, that would be awesome, right? Like, yeah. like that idea that you have mice and whatever, depending where I'm, that's really great because it's a personalized soundtrack of me yeah. walking through the park. But I don't think I'm ever going to be in the Magic Kingdom by myself with earbuds yeah. in my head where yeah. I could take advantage of that. And I don't feel like, okay, kids, hold on. I know I have an audio experience here. I'm going to listen to it. You sit <laughs> here, please. No, 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 that's never going to work. No, kids, don't I, talk to me. I'm having an audio <laughs> experience. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Like, how do, how's that family friendly? Like, everybody have to have earbuds? <laughs> so not only are we staring at our phone waiting for the next <laughs> lightning lane to open up or, oh, my God, there's a new new notification. One line is five minutes faster. Let's go. Oh, quiet audio experience, please. And we're all like like this. Staring, like, what are we doing here? Um, okay, so there's some other things. Um, did I hit the end? I hit the end of, the, of our slideshow. So uh, I, I I guess one thing we should mention, too, is yes. the, the, the start time of this. They said it's going to launch in the fall. Whatever that means. That's all they said. Um, we heard some scuttlebutt that it's going to be like mid-October, which I'm hoping for, that they're not going to launch this like October 1st while I'm there for the 50th on top of everything You're not else. ready. <laughs> but, um, Come on, guinea pig. Uh, yeah, so we'll see. So that's the latest we've heard, but they they haven't exactly said. And we don't know the um, individual attraction selection cost yet. Even that 4 to 24 is just a rumor. That's obviously a big thing. Also, right. um, and I can tweet it out there, but Blog Mickey has a, a post where they have who they believe the attractions will be. I have it on screen right now. Yeah, so for Magic Kingdom, the, the extra cost ones, the paid Lightning Lane ones are Seven Dwarfs Mine Train and Space Mountain. Epcot, it is Remy, Ratatouille, and Test Track. Hollywood Studios, it's Slinky Dog and Rise of the Resistance. And Animal Kingdom is Avatar, Flight of Passage, and the Safari, which the Safari That's was weird. kind of the one. Yeah, one thing I noticed was I think for each one, they're trying to pick kind of like one thrill ride and one more family ride. And oh, so I don't point. know what like in-demand family ride there is at Animal Kingdom. Dinosaur. Um, is that family friendly i mean i guess it could they could have been that but the safari i mean does get a long line sometimes but that that's seems true. like something that's like almost like the like the park was built for yeah. the safari right so it's like it's like the quintessential like it's a must do park. when you're there so to make that the paid one i'm hoping that one's not accurate but i guess we'll see all right phil we've been talking about still to come oh my gosh yes we've been talking about the gd plus for gosh uh 40-ish minutes now phil are you paying for it is this worth it to you I'm gonna. I'm, I'm hopefully there's gonna be plenty of time to see to have mm -hmm. watch other people's experiences. It starts tomorrow, Phil. Or are you paying eighty dollars for your family to hook up? To get I. Up? Well, now the crowds are low, so probably not. But in a normal time <laughs> that I'm going, I would probably pay it at I least would. some days. I don't know if I would do it 
I don't think I would do it every day but I would do it maybe for like our magic kingdom day or something to try to get as much done as we could. With, Cause I think that, you know, the most rides are there and stuff like that. I don't think I would do it every day, but I probably do it some days. I just want to say for, in my family, I was talking to my mother and my wife, they were all shocked and abhorred to be like, well, Disney wants how much more money per day. And there's a couple expletives and not <laughs> fans of uh, Disney corporate for these decisions. Um, it definitely makes me think twice about, what I'm paying for at Disney. I'm going to basically, if I'm, if I'm doing this, do I really need to do a sit down dinner? Do I really need yeah. to buy these things? Like, well, that's, that's definitely a, the big thing for me. There's it's, a finite amount of money I'm spending in a day at Disney. And if they're going to make me pay $80 to have the experience I had two years ago, paying the normal amount of money, nothing extra to have it. I'm not buying Buzz Light, a giant Buzz Lightyear toy for my, my, my son. And I'm definitely not buying ice cream because the dining yeah. plan is, God knows what the dining plan is going to cost. When it comes to this. And you're not a dining plan person. I was. I know, I know. It's just like, I, you know what? I won't buy a dinner tonight. I'm going to do two quick service meals today. Or I'm doing one quick service meal and we're buying just a bunch of pretzels and everybody's sharing for dinner type of thing. Like, there's definitely a balance. If, like, this is more stuff I have to buy, I'm buying less stuff elsewhere. Yeah. I mean, I think with everything with Disney planning, whether it's, Am I staying on site or off site at a deluxe or a monorail? And then, okay, if I'm spending it there, I'm not going to spend it elsewhere. Like, and this is just something else you're going to have to spend if you want. Um, I do also think pricing just always goes up at Disney. So, always. you know, they could have just baked in. They said, okay, it's free, but tickets went up by $15 a day. You know, like that type of a thing. Instead, they're just saying this is an optional add-on. Um, but it just makes things more complicated. And it does seem like, okay, I'm going to have to spend Nickel more to get and the same experience. I guess... My, my final thought, I guess, is I'm not happy about having to pay more, but compared to some of the other rumors or what some other theme parks do, yes. I think this is a better solution than because I don't know what I would have done if they came back and said, OK, fast pass access is you get it for every ride for every day, but it's two hundred dollars a day, like, you know, like at Universal, you know? Yep. So I prefer this to that because I feel like I can kind of finagle things and figure out where I want to spend and where I don't. But. It's Just perverse. <laughs> I'm per, it's perverse, but I'm happy it's only fifteen dollars. Yeah, exactly. It could have been yeah. a lot worse. And I think yeah. Disney's playing off that. Oh, yep. they thought they were going to make it spend us a million dollars to go. No, it's only fifteen dollars a person, and you get lightning lane stuff. Oh, by the way, we were giving you three of these for free, <laughs> like well, nineteen think, months ago. I think most people know that, and and we did have that note shouted down that the video that Disney put out is the most disliked video yes. ever Disney has put out. So people are not happy about it, but. Of course, no, they're not uh, happy about it because they're spending, having to spend more money. Disney, I mean, there's there's plenty of people canceling trips right now. Disney's good. You're like, I, I fully suspect, fully expect, excuse me, that this is going to be part of bundles. Like, you get, if you book five or more tickets, like, if this, no one's buying this. Like, this is not, like, automatic purchase for every single ticket. So, they're going to have metrics. We mm -hmm. sold 100 tickets for the day in only um, 50 tickets got the genie plus right they're gonna have these things like yep. so how do we get people to get more genie plus or how do we get more people to buy like they've stayed seven days with us but they only bought five tickets versus seven tickets how do we get them to buy eight tickets or whatever yeah. this is gonna be like uh for five days or more or six days or more you get free genie plus if you book six yeah. nights or more like whatever definitely... metric they need to get the person i could definitely see day. packages especially for like the slower times of year you know, like, okay, you stay four days or more, you get Genie, you know, almost like they did with free dining or stuff like yep. that when it's different promotions. Say, okay, if you do this with a non-discounted room and park hoppers, you get Genie Plus included for free or whatever. The, 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 Disney wants more, like, just think, like, what, what dials could Disney turn to entice you to come for a vacation? Before mm -hmm. it was rack rate discounts. Which were never good deals unless you were standing at staying at Deluxe's because twenty percent off a hundred dollars a day is only twenty bucks. But when you can get free dining, which is a bunch of snacks yeah. and whatever, it was it, obviously the free dining was always better, even if it's just a quick service meal. So you can offer discounts on rack rates, uh, discounts on big ticket packages, going from seven to eight days, that type of thing. Mm -hmm. Now, I mean, it was hoppers, and then now it's like Genie Plus. There's something extra we can offer you. So I, I think they're going to start. I mean, they fully expect not having to discount anything for the 50th because they don't want to have oh, to yeah, do yeah. that. And um, I, I don't suspect that we'll see any of these things discounted until next summer. I think that's the earliest yeah. we're gonna, actually going to see it. 
Um, but we'll see how demand is going through the winter with reality that's kind of going through Florida right now. So that might change a lot of things. Um, so we'll see. Um, okay. One, one other thing to mention uh, for annual passes, which they have said are going to be on sale for the 50th. We don't know exactly when. That's another um, thing. As and they did now, say there was an announcement coming, right? Yes. We saw yeah, that. Did. So I, hopefully I that something's means. coming out. Yeah. <laughs> Um, but you can now spend fifteen hundred dollars per person to get an annual. Pass. That's not exciting. Please don't. No. I don't care anymore. Uh, if you have an annual pass, you can add Disney Plus or Disney Plus Genie Plus at fifteen dollars a day. Right now, they yes. have said they're not going to have like an option where there's an upgrade to your annual pass and you get it for every day you go. I assume that will come in the future as well. But for, to start off, they they won't need to do that. But that's something a lot of annual pass holders are not happy about. Like. Or basically, they're like, well, I'll just never buy it because I'm there all the time. So I'll just get in standby for the rides I want. We should have just had an emergency podcast about the Disney Plus because well, we, we are now at the did. end of the show. <laughs> I think that's what we did. <laughs> that's what it is. All right, Phil, we need to make a, um executive decision. We're basically at the end of the show. We've been talking about yeah. Genie Plus for 50 minutes. Do we want to do our DVC expedition for the week to run for another 15 to 20 minutes? Or do we want to save it for next week? I think we save it. I think this I is think our so. Genie Plus special. This is the Genie Plus special. Genie yeah. Plus special. <laughs> and we're not charging you fifteen dollars for it. So. Yes, <laughs> I, I'm down for that. Um, so the uh, DBC expedition next week is part one is going to be all about the monorail work came from the history of monorails around the world, that type of thing. So stay tuned and listen to that next week. Attractionality. We're gonna we're gonna. I, this is the one I wanted to talk about last week, but Adam Gaston did not finish it on time and it's about the country bears jamboree i gave it one low mark oh i love this but i gave it one low mark because of a specific reason which we'll have to find out next week nice we'll go over it. excellent thank you thank you phil where can they find us on social media where they can tell us about their disney depression or their anger and angst about the genie plus and stuff? <laughs> yes feel free to tweet us our, our how you disagree yes. with our takes about genie plus and how it's all terrible and you're never going back to disney again um twitter at pod dbc instagram the dbc podcast facebook dbc pod our youtube channel and the discord server where there was a lot of chatter <laughs> on the day it came out yes and our dbc recommends is don't pay for light, lightning lanes i was i was at lightning pass Lightning lanes. Nope. Do not do not be that person who pays for a lightning lane for like Buzz Lightyear or anything well, it's, else. Like, it's not, yeah, yeah. Pay pay for Rise of the Resistance if 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 you can. That I think that's the only thing that you pay for. I think so. Because you're if you don't get it, you can't get in. Ratatouille, like that's not gonna that boarding group's gonna be easy to get after a month. That's gonna be I fine. Think so, yeah. That's gonna be fine. Rise is worth paying the money. I think that's the only thing that's worth paying. And I, this is coming from a guy who's never been on it. I, and I would pay money to. Make I've been it. on it. It's worth paying. <laughs> <laughs> well, there you got two different. Well, the one takes. thing I mean, I think certainly yeah. at least if you've never done it or you only done it once or twice, it's certainly maybe the people that have done it twenty times don't want to pay for it. But if you've never done it, pay to do it. So that being said, guys, um, go to bed well, knowing that Disney's taking more money out of your pocket. This is not changing anytime soon, and I guarantee you that there's going to be massive discounts going to Disney probably around 2024, 2025, when this hits everybody's pocket coming out of, hopefully, coming out of COVID at this point, and um, hosp uh, hospitals. Hotel rates are high. Park attendance is high. Disney uh, Genie Plus is begging money from you. There's going to be massive discounts. because I, 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 This is something that we have to track over the years, Phil because yeah. you're in tune with it, is the off-site bookings. Mm -hmm. We have to check because um, I, I, I'm, I'm guaranteeing you Len Testa and his group are going to be tracking this much better than anything that we could ever do. Um, and probably be piggybacking off his data sharing with all of you is the um, occupancy rate of non-Disney hotels in Orlando is going to go up over the next couple of years. My Disney, um, the uh, Magical Express is going away. Early entry is kind of mostly going away. Uh, half hour is really not too much. It Go go on Touring Plans. Lent has put an actually excellent article what half hour early means for everybody, time-wise, and how everything backs up. He did some good analytics about it. I, uh, we're, we're, I'm touching on a whole other subject. We probably have to. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, I think we need to just day. stop talking. Yeah. Stop talking right here. Guys, thank you for listening. This has been fun. <laughs> and uh, this is the Genie Plus episode. Have a good week, everybody. Talk to you next time. Take care.